Welcome back, 0K fans! Back to Hitbox. Sorry about the weird thing with Twitch where Hitbox wasn't working. Anyway, back to normal. Well, relatively normal. And another match this time is going to be Golda versus Drone on Eye of Horus. This is actually a request by Drone, and should be interesting. So, Eye of Horus is a map which I have shown several times before, and yes, I just went through and edited the widget, so it is now just doing tenths, not hundredths. A little bit less distracting. Anyway, as I was saying, with this we have... Actually, the mess I could have edited the team colors. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, yes, this is all plus 2.2. The entire thing around, basically, plus 2.2. It's not... Yeah, it's slightly more than that if you look closely, but it's... Yeah. 2.2 for everything. Now, this map, typically, we have players starting out in the center or starting out on... Actually, 1-on-1 one -on -one is always the center. I've never seen anyone 1-on-1 one -on -one start in the sides. In 2v2... You often see people start here, and then either here or here. Usually, actually, here. I thought it wasn't going to be here, and then the last 2v2 tournament proved me completely wrong. So, yes, that's where it starts. But the center is the easiest place to start. Most defensible, has the easiest path to anything. So typically, what will happen from here is that the players will take the center pretty quick, and then oftentimes they'll go over to the west side of the map, or northeast, southwest, northeast, and then eventually take the northwest and southeast, as so that's a little bit harder to control, while also pushing towards the center. And then trying to take the center is usually a big deal, but usually the players will focus around these corridors over here to the west and to the east. That's what will be the focus of the game, rather than the center directly. So that, that's how it should probably play out. Let's see if that actually is how it works out. Gota going out with very quick constructors. Drone, on the other hand, getting a quick glaive. Just one glaive to scout out with. Wanted to be a little bit more aggressive, but Gota decided to go for the very quick conjurer. This should work out decently well. I mean, there is enough space, I think, that there should be no problem with... Yeah. Golda has a glaive out, so it's not a problem. Unlike with the last game in Iceland, this is only one conjurer on a fairly large map. As opposed to two. I mean, Njadaran built two conjurers, though admittedly they still won the game, but they built two conjurers rather than just one, which is a very risky strategy to do. However, just the one conjurer followed by glaives, that's perfectly reasonable. That being said, Golda does not have any defenses at this point, and is going to be hit pretty quick. Drone coming around the side will be able to hit Golda. Yeah, almost undefended, though Golda should be able to stop this without too much issue. Yeah, this metal stretch is going to go down, and at the same time, Golda and Drone meeting up. Golda not quite able to get through, and the other at the same time, though, Drone able to get rid of Radar and able to get rid of Metal Extractor, but Golda does manage to finish that off. While Drone doesn't have anything more in production, Golda does. Golda has a few more glaives coming out, still just pushing them out. Drone, on the other hand, appears to be pretty focused on getting their energy economy going. They want to get that up and running as quickly as possible. While Drone, on the other hand, sorry, Golda, on the other hand, less worried about getting their energy economy up, more worried about getting their military up. Which does mean that, Go yeah, as we can see, Golda in a great spot to get rid of another conjurer, stopping this expansion attempt. And losing a glaive in the process, but that was totally worth it. Slowing Drone's expansions down. Well, drone, on the other hand, making sure that Gold is going to have a hard time expanding over to the northwest. That, however, is not that big of a deal because, like I said, most players are going to expand to the northeast first or southwest. And Gold is doing the same thing. Just making, well, actually double checking to make sure the geothermal plant hasn't been taken yet, which, no, it hasn't. And Drone actually managing to win a lot of these engagements of glaives, just slightly microing a bit better than Golda. Very slightly. It's it's kind of tricky, Glaive Micro. It's almost a little bit chancy. Like, one-on-one -on -one Glaive Micro, being able to do it consistently well is very difficult, and I'm not even sure how much skill is involved, to be quite honest, but it is, it is a difficult thing to do regardless. At any rate, Drone able to keep themselves safe, Golda able to keep themselves relatively safe, and Drone is, however, slightly ahead in economy. They still managed to expand, despite losing that Conjurer. They're still able to expand, while Golda expanding just a bit slower. But not with harassment. Like, no harassment's gonna get in. Golda's putting a stop to that, making absolutely sure that nothing is gonna be allowed through. Finishing off that one Glaive. And that is the end of that. At this point, both players are basically expanding in relative peace. Neither player can do much to penetrate the other. Drona, however, is a little bit scary with about a dozen glaives moving north. Golda has a decent number, and with 
fact that Golda can produce here, they have the defender's advantage of production, they should be able to match this, but they haven't. It appears that they are focusing very much on setting up... Well, what are they focusing on setting up, actually? They have... They haven't got much built. They have some harassment going down. They're not really building much in their factory. Building lotuses here and there, trying to get that done as quickly as possible. Yeah, Golda is trying to make absolutely sure they aren't spending any more than they have to. I'm still a little surprised they aren't using low priority on the factory. Like, low priority on the factory is pretty much the way to go if you want to get around this problem. Like, where you have to stop production halfway through. Drone, on the other hand, they actually aren't doing low priority on the factory. They are just splitting their resources. Which is working out okay. They're not actually losing too much. I mean, at this point, Golda hasn't managed to get too much ground. Although, Golda is managing to take the northeast with pretty much complete impunity. Drone has not really tried for the southwest. They don't appear to be focusing on that as much. Though they are sending some... They're sending a Glaive and a Contra, so they are trying to take it eventually. But that is not their focus. They're focusing on the Reclaim first. Which might be a little bit early, but I can't say I blame that. That is... That is a sensible move. There is a fair amount of Reclaim around here. This is even more so. and that That is included. And Drone... Completely stopping Golda's expansion attempt over to the northwest, which is exactly what they tried to do earlier. And yeah, now we've got multiple glaives. This is where micromanagement skill is much more, well, measurable, I suppose. It's easier to tell that there is micromanagement skill involved. But I mean, this two players are very close when it comes to that. It's, it's hard to tell which one does have the better micromanagement, but Drone has been just barely eking ahead on most of the engagements. And they are managing to take a decent amount of the map as well. Now, now getting their expansion attempts in full gear, this is going to be oh, another another glaive being snuck around, and this is going to stop yet another conjurer from expanding. So Golda being stopped at every turn by drone, drone making absolutely sure as best as they can that drone that Golda will not be able to expand, will not be able to get to the macro game, has to be forced back just into these seven metal extractors, while drone on the other hand is expanding like a virus. I mean, they're just getting everywhere, stopping any of Golda's attempts to harass, although the attempt to the southwest is going to be a major deal. That is going to be a problem. If they lose this... No, they're not going to lose this. I mean, it looks like Drone should be able to hold this off, no problem. There isn't much in the way of defenses over here. This radar is pretty vulnerable. And Drone, because why not, builds up a scythe, sends it to the north, and gets that all set up with a harassment. Because why not? Leave Gota with six metal extractors. Although, admittedly, Gota has managed to take the southwest, or sorry, northwest finally. Southwest is being damaged a bit. That radar was destroyed, but the Lotus is stopping at Gota and surprisingly not focused on this at all. I find this very surprising because, well, it's Gota. But I think Gota must have a bit more of a macro management oriented playstyle, which they are starting to get back into. I mean, they are starting to get to the point where they can actually take advantage of that. Mind you, both players are very good at the macro management game. They're both good at the late game with a lot of resources. It's This is not going to be a big problem. I mean, whichever one gets there first is going to have the advantage, but I think Drone is doing a pretty decent job stopping Golda from managing to get through. However, it is a question of reclaim. Everything destroyed is yet another thing that can be reclaimed. So despite the fact that Golda is losing these metal extractors left and right, they aren't actually necessarily losing a lot of metal income. I mean, it's temporarily losing metal income, but they have the reclaim to make up for it. But as you can see, Drone going for an interesting setup. They're trying to take the center first. Take the center, protect that, and then fall back and take the sides. This is a bit of a risky strategy because you're a bit more vulnerable. You're pushing a bit forward. But at this point, Drone knows where Golda is. They know where Golda's forces are. They know they can get away with this. And because they've managed to establish themselves decently well, they've gotten some established stuff they can move back safely. They can take the stuff behind what they've already captured with no worries. It's not going to be easy for Gota to be able to harass this backdoor stuff because the front door needs to be knocked down first. It's just building up the front door. That's the risky part. And as you can see, the side door, however, has been left open on creaky hinges. And Gota is... Gota's able to get in. Drone knows it, though. And Drone will likely have some forces to stop it. The Drone looks like they don't even care. They're actually going straight... They're going forward. They don't even worry about this at all. I mean, they have some defensive buildings. They have some stuff they can use to get around this. But honestly, it looks like they're just... They're trying to go for the kill, almost. Deal as much damage as they can. 
Get rid of the defenses. Get rid of the commander if they're lucky. I don't think they're going to go for that, though. I think they're going to try to avoid it. But these glaives could kill the commander. No, they're going to go for it. I mean, that's not enough. They, if they got rid of the rest of the glaives first, that would have been a commander kill. But as it stood, Golda just had too many glaives. That was a lot of reclaim that Golda can use. That was a bit of a blunder. At the same time, Golda going in. And Drone has switched to air, getting some swifts up. Early swifts up, which will help the defense here. And... Otherwise, there's actually not much on the ground. There's nothing on the ground here to defend. Drone coming in, in the north at the same time that Gold is coming in, in the south. And Gold's attack in the south is going to be somewhat successful. It's going to go over here, try to get through these lotuses. It, it will be able to do so. It will be able to actually tear down, with the loss of a few glaives, tear down the lotuses, tear down these metal extractors, and then it should be able to actually smash down the front door, as it were. But at the same time... Drone continuing to lose more units in Golda's base. This is starting to turn around. I mean, the switch to air was a good idea, but at this point, Drone is in a pretty tight spot. Like, they are losing units inside of Golda's territory. They're losing a lot of... I mean, okay, right now, let's just check for reclaim. There's about... 200, 300 or so, plus another... Oops. Oh. 500... Come on. Okay, so it's about 1,000 reclaim for Golda of Drone's forces. That hasn't been taken already. And... Okay, about the same amount for... No, actually, 700 for Drone from Golda. And less of that in a safe spot. So there's a lot more in the safer spots of Golda's, of Golda's base compared to Drone's base. But at the same time, Drone has taken the center. They are being extremely aggressive. It has been, it's been characterized in their entire play. From the start where they started with their early glaive, to now, where they've taken the entire center, and successfully taken it, too. Gold is playing far more defensively than Drone is. But at the same time, like I said, Gold does have all this reclaim they can work off of. And their current economy, it's not using any reclaim from the looks of it. I could be wrong, but I don't see any reclaiming going on at all. Or, never mind, I was wrong. There was a small amount. Gold's commander was reclaiming a bit. So without the reclaim, it's... It is kind of close. But yeah, this is... With Reclaim, Golda is even with, with Drone, despite the fact that Drone has the territory. Now, of course, Reclaim is temporary. That is, however, still going to be... With 1,000 metal, that's easily going to be... About a minute and a half worth of Reclaim with the Commander. If it's just the Commander doing it... Yeah, and if it's more than that, then their actual rate of metal extraction is even higher, or their metal income is even higher as a result. Drone, however, at this point, able to get rid of... Yeah, able to get rid of all of Golda's Swifts. Takes air control and, or very nearly, oh yeah, there we go, gets rid of that last swift. Yeah, takes air control and we'll see, are they going to convert that? They're going for hawks, they're not immediately going for ravens. Gota is still in the air game somewhat, I mean, drone not confident they have air control. They want to make absolutely sure that they have air control before going for bombers. And that's a very safe thing to do. While at the same time, drone taking the southeast. Not quite really taking the southwest, though. Taking the southeast, a bit risky, too. They have essentially naked expanded. There is one Lotus and one Defender, but for all the for all that Gold has been sending, that's not quite enough. These four Glaives won't be able to get through, but normally Gold has been sending closer to five or... Well, five to ten Glaives. And these two Metal Extractors are actually pretty dead as well. These Metal Extractors are about to go down. The Defender being a nice boon, but still, one Metal Extractor down. The second Metal Extractor, is it going to go down? No, it will not. The Swift's able to help defend. However, this Metal Extractor in the back does go down, so regardless, two Metal Extractors do go down, along with the Defender. But at the same time, Drone sending in another eight Glaives, which will not be able to do any major damage. There's too much in the way of defensive forces. These Glaives have had no chance. That being said, though, Drone does have territory. They do have the Metal Extractors. They can set up an Overdrive Grid pretty efficiently, too. Actually, is that... Yeah, they're already building a fusion plant. Speaking of overdrive grid, they are really deciding to go for that. At this point, Drone just wants to hold their territory, build up their overdrive, and then explode from there. Probably set up in Destrider. I'd imagine fairly quickly. No Ravens, though. They are focused entirely on just maintaining air control. They are not wanting to spend any money at all on air to ground at this stage in the game. Which surprises me slightly, but not terribly. Not completely. That being said, there are, there are gremlins up. Couple gremlins up for Golda, just to try to avoid having to deal with air with air. At the same time, Drone switched over to Rocco's. Pretty much entirely Rocco's. Getting so no. Drone has not switched over entirely to Rocco's. They got a few Rocco's. 
Golda's got Rockos in their queue. Which kind of makes sense. Getting rid of the defenders is a bit easier with ranged units. Although hammers are the choice, but honestly, no one, no one at high level uses hammers. I have never seen a high level player use hammers. If that ever happened, I would be pleasantly surprised, to be quite honest, but I don't think that would ever happen. Anyway, Golda is now trying to retake air control, having set up a massive army of Swifts beforehand, and with the Gremlins' as extra support to get rid of what they could of Drone's forces. Drone is... Holding strong, regardless. They're actually managing to get rid of these Swifts. This Hawk did a pretty good job, and the secondary Hawk as well. So at this point, I mean, Swifts were nerfed about, like, version 1.3 and around 1.3.1.6. Like, Swifts were nerfed a bit, and it looks like they that did mean Hawks actually have a niche now. Because Hawks was, used to be completely useless. Like, you could not use Hawks compared to Swifts. But, like, if you're going to build Hawks, build Swifts. But now it appears that Hawks are actually a bit more suitable as a counter. Not totally sure, that was only one fight. It might not be the case entirely, but it would appear that Hawks actually do have a bit of a chance now. And Gota attacking to the southeast, while at the same time the Rockos attack to the north. Gota pushing them back though, and the Glaives coming in, that's going to stop those Rockos cold. But I don't think Drone cares about that. As long as Drone doesn't lose these Metal Extractors, which actually they are about to, so they might care about this quite a lot. That's the one thing, if they lose the Metal Extractors, that's a big blow. Because Gota right now, they are focusing entirely on Overdrive, or a fair amount on Overdrive. Not entirely, but they're focusing a fair amount on it. They have a lot of reclaim that they've taken. They still have a lot of reclaim left. That's where their economic parity is coming in from reclaim. Drone, on the other hand, just got a metal, just got a fusion reactor, and at this point, they have their overdrive set up. At least for the most part, they might need a little bit more. And this, this is it. This is the Strider Hub. Like I said, get that, get that metal plus fifteen. Get a Strider Hub because that's. That's a good time to do it. Plus 50 is typically when Strider Hubs do come up, somewhere around that point. Like, plus 20, plus 30... Oh, sorry, plus 30 is usually when air comes up, and plus 50 is when Striders often come up. And Dante being thrown out there for Drone, but at the same time, Golda able to wipe out that center expansion. Everything in the center has been wiped out. Golda able to completely knock this down. They're going straight for the throat. This Dante still has another four minutes to build up. I mean, plus 50 is quite a lot, but it's... Apparently not quite enough, not for something efficient. Oh, never mind, it's going to take two minutes. Okay, that is still going to take a little while. But, despite that, Drone able to manage to hold them back somewhat. Like I said, they did lose the center, they lost a lot of territory. Golda trying to take if they can, although Golda is losing. I think Northeast is taking a lot of damage. This Lotus here, about the only hope left. Those Swifts coming in, those Swifts are going to be actually even more hope. Not particularly good hope, but hey, they do at least deal with it eventually. The scythe eventually goes down. But that being said, there, this center is completely contested. No one really has it. I mean, Gold has taken the north side of it. The south side is totally contested. Drone can't easily retake it. That's the one problem for Drone. So right now, Gold and Drone are much more even. But this Dante here should make the difference. On the other hand, Golda does not have anything being built up. No major investments or anything. They've just gone entirely for economy. They're going for more and more units. Trying to build a lot of Glaives, trying to build a lot of Swifts. Not really focusing a lot. And they're actually going to get air control back as a result of focusing on the Swifts. Those Hawks going down, and air control has been put squarely into Golda's hands. There is not much that Drone can do with air right now. They do have a Razor up just in case. And the Dante has been completed. The Dante is up, and it will be moving out, trying to reclaim the entire center. A little bit tricky to deal with the fact that there's a lot... How many Swifts are there? It's like 17 Swifts. And Hawks are being built up, and a few Swifts as well from Drone, but Drone essentially does not have air control for the next couple minutes, easily. They have ground control pretty well with the Dante, but they do not have air control. And ground control is much harder to maintain. Like, obviously, ground units move slower, so it's harder to maintain any presence on the ground everywhere, as you can with air. Dante, however, should be able to tear apart these metal extractors without any issue, and at this point, Gouda is starting to fall behind. They are, however, getting their own fusion reactor, realizing that they really needed to get that. Not to mention, they do have a bit of a glut of metal at this point. Still, they are... Now they have their energy back up, but... They haven't... Have they gone for Stratop? I don't think they're going to do that. I think... Well, it looks like they are going for Heavy Raven. Probably going to build another Caretaker. Getting Reap... Yep, they are going for Heavy Air. They want the Ravens. They want to build up a massive Bomber Squad. 
They aren't going for the Striders. And at this point, we already have about four Ravens. None from drones since they didn't get air control. They didn't take advantage of the fact that they had air control for that purpose. They took advantage of it for swift harassment instead. And even then, not that much of it. Gota did a lot more swift harassment than drone did. But now, the lines are fairly even, yet at the same time, Dante coming in. As the lines even up, Dante, the line breaker, comes in to do exactly what I just said it was, even though it's not actually called a line breaker. But yes, that's basically what it is at this point in the game. It is going to break all the lines. Everything will break. However, everything may include the Dante, given how these are working out. However, the Hawks coming in here, not a bad use of Hawks, but unfortunately not able to kill off the Ravens in time. Hawks do not quite have the DPS that Swifts have. They're pretty good against Swifts due to the fact that they last for a while, and they do have more consistent damage, but they don't have quite the alpha. It's more of what I'm... That's more what I was getting at. However, the important thing is they can't easily kill the Raven in time, and... The Dante's... The Dante's dead? No, the Dante's retreating. That's what, That makes more sense. The Dante was only... It was not even half health. Good move, though, because as you can see, Gorda did go straight for that... Well, actually not the best move, but... Still, Gorda would have probably taken the Dante if they knew where it was, but at this point, Gorda is not... Uh, well, actually, Gorda is entirely where the Dante is. Never mind. Gorda is... Gorda is completely certain where to go and what to do. There's... However... Small issue of the Swifts and Hawks coming in here because Gota has been trying to spend their air superiority on bombers, which is always risky. It does mean that your opponent can go heavily for anti air and for Swifts and Hawks and retake air control that way. Especially as the Ravens are going down before even being able to kill the Dante. The Dante retreating very nicely, still losing a bit of health here and there, but it has a few more hits yet. Okay, why did Integral Menu die? That was really bizarre. And for that matter, the chili... Okay, sorry about that. I don't know why that happened, but... Those widgets just somehow died. Anyway, so yeah, there's still four hits left and no bombers. That's the important thing. That's the thing with air control. You gotta make sure you're careful about it. Because when you build bombers, you're not building swifts and hawks. And when you're not building swifts and hawks, your opponent could be, and they can get rid of your bombers that way. So it's a tricky thing. You're basically spending air control. You can almost think of it as a resource. You're spending it on ground control in the air air superiority on the ground, but the problem is you are spending that air control resource, theoretically. If your opponent takes advantage of it, they are going to kill your bombers. They are going to take back air control, and at this point, Drone has it. And Drone, they're just going, they're going heavily Swift Hawk, and Golda trying to retake air control with a bunch of Swifts. They already have, they already have a dozen or so. It's not bad, although admittedly, compared to the Swifts and Hawks that are over here, there's, well, half a dozen Swifts and, yeah, there's a dozen Swifts and Hawks. So at this point, I would still give it to Drone to maintain air control. And that Dante is still around. That Dante has not died. It is getting healed up. But it is not being le left to die, which is very good. But at the same time, that does mean that Drone's a little bit vulnerable. However, Drone's not that vulnerable. Still a lot of defenses set up. Defenders, Swifts, like everything's set up to get rid of these Glaives. Only a couple of them go down in the process of being assaulted. And Gota, in their attempt to try to regain air control, does not manage to do so, losing a lot of their Swifts. But we still have fairly even lines, and if the Dante, once it's healed up, which is now, that should be able to now go forward and break these lines. And given that Drone does have a two-fold advantage militarily compared to Gota, I think Drone is going to take this match. The territory control they had earlier on really did solidify this. And this is, I think, the last attack. It certainly looks like it. If Drone loses this and loses their army in the process, that is going to be a massive blow. I mean, Gota does have the same economy, so if, if their army values end up evening out, I think Gota would probably be able to just bounce back from this. However, at this point, there isn't much. Like, five glaives compared to a couple dozen. Or no, like a dozen glaives compared to a couple dozen. And those being split out already. The Dante taking out that eastern defense line, and that's about the strongest defense line that Gota had. The western side's completely undefended, or almost completely undefended. These defenders are nothing compared to the glaives coming in here. Too many glaives to defend against. The Dante's taken out that southeast side. Swift's taken air control. I think Gota has lost this game. Not sure if they're going to throw in the towel, though, but not much can be done here. I mean, it was just that switch over to bombers really did give Drone the air control they needed to get in. 
I mean, it was a, not a bad switch. Getting rid of the Dante was a smart idea. If you get rid of the Dante, that's a huge blow. I mean, most of Drone's military spending, that's like a third of military spending, oh yeah, most, but a large chunk of it. The largest individual chunk of military spending is that Dante. And if that Dante dies, that's... That is a lot of firepower that's gone down the drain, but at this point, that is not likely to happen. And this set of glaives is about the only thing that Golda has. If Golda loses, I think they're going to throw in the towel. They still have the swifts, yes, but that's really all they're building. These glaives are doing a decent amount of damage, but running into Drone's glaive line, supported by Lotuses. Golda smartly trying to pull them out, trying to get them away from there. Trying to get into an advantageous position, able to get rid of the glaive line, but not with enough glaives to take out the Lotuses in the process. However, they're far from broke. Golda can still set up their army. They can still rebuild their glaives. They can still reclaim a large number of things. So they're still rebuilding, and they're actually now pretty confident they have air control, which is actually pretty likely. Drone stopped focusing on air production as much as they had been before, and Golda has just been pumping everything into air. Like pumping 70, 50 to 70 metal into air production this entire time. So at this point, Golda, I'd say, is going to be able to take air control. While light vehicle factory coming in for drone, they switched over to that, added that to the repertoire for Ravagers. And did not move forward to the Dante. Makes some sense, but at this point, it actually probably would have won them the game if they had. Because now we have, yet again, half a dozen bombers. This Dante, once again, is quite vulnerable. And as a result of air security not really being a priority in drone's eyes, but what is going to be able to tear apart those Swifts and Hawks without issue and make it that much harder for these to be killed, these bombers here? The Ravens will not go down easily. If Drone can take them down, Golden can just rebuild them. Golden is focusing so heavily on that. And it looks like another Dante has been built. So we have two Dantes on the field. And I think Drone is just going to go for it. This one getting repaired, and probably when that gets repaired, the two are just going to go straight forward. Drone taking the territory they can. I mean, Drone has been aggressive, but they've been largely aggressive for the purpose of taking territory to continue pushing forward. And they continue to be at twice the military spending value, although that entire difference is the two Striders. The two Dantes, those are 7,000 metal altogether. That's, that is the difference between Golda and Drone's economy. Everything else is even. And right now, the Dantes are not in any position to actually attack anything. So at the moment, Drone is suddenly behind. That being said, though, yeah, Air Superiority is going for Golda. I mean, Golda is losing quite a few units in the process, but... Oh, wait. No, what? Really? Once again. Once again, Golda has lost Air Superiority just barely, but those Hawks are actually doing a wonderful job, apparently. Far more useful than I expected. And Ravager's coming in here, distracting those Bombers. This is... This is something I think Drone... I wonder if Drone's actually intending to do this for distracting Bombers, or if they just wanted to deal some damage with a tank unit. Regardless, it is distracting Bombers, it is keeping them from attacking Dantes. Which means the Dantes have a bit more room to breathe. And <laughs> more Scythes coming in. Drone getting that Scythe off far more effectively than they did before. And how much overdrive is there? Almost double overdrive. Yeah, that's double to triple overdrive for Golda, but that's not a whole lot of grid. Whereas on the other hand... Drone does have a much bigger grid, although I can't actually see it anymore for some odd reason. Not sure why that grid is hidden. I don't know what's going on. Why must this game have bugs? Anyway. Drone, however, does have a stronger grid overall. Does have the Dante. The two Dantes. Which is gonna, is gonna get bombed out. It is not gonna die in the process, though. And the Gremlins with the Dante. Very wise move there. Drone making sure that that Dante does not get killed without any retaliation. And actually, it doesn't get killed in the process. And Golda, realizing there's not much they can do, throws in the towel, and that is game... That might be game. They said GG, so... Yeah, that that is game. Well done, drone. I can kind of see why you requested this, but yeah, well done regardless. Hmm, not sure why that happened. Overdrive is not showing up anymore. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. That was an interesting game. Very much showed the power of territory control, and also why it's important to know how much air control you actually have and can actually maintain. Because those bombers were a good move, it's just that they were a little, they overextended a little bit and there wasn't enough air control to support them. Like a, f a couple fewer bombers and a few more swifts or hawks, that might have actually done the trick for Golda. It was very close though. So yeah, very well done. Interesting game to watch. 
Thank you for that game for us, Drone. I'm sure there's stuff I missed from that game. It's a bit harder to... It's always been harder to cast large macro games like this just because there's a lot going on. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, and that will be it for me tonight, I think. So thank you all for watching, everyone, and have a good night.